Today, we are gonna deal with three essential questions that you need to answer for yourself on the road to resilience. Let's get to it. Hi everyone, if you're new to the channel and you don't know who I am, my name is Andrew, and for nearly 27 years, I've had the pleasure of helping people with mentoring, counseling, coaching, all kinds of contexts like that to improve their inner life, health, and sustainability. The amazing thing is that the results speak for themselves. Happier, healthier, more sustainable lives where marriage, family, and relationships, emotions, mental health, you name it, all extraordinarily higher. I hope that what you hear today can help you in the same way. As you may know, if you've been watching previous episodes, we've been dealing with this broader theme of raising strong men. We've talked about raising strong sons. We've talked about raising strong fathers. We've been talking about real life stories like I shared my own journey. Well, in today's episode, we are dealing with the vital subject of raising resilient men, the road to resilience. Most of you would agree or possibly agree that in today's world, we are not seeing resilience in our men the way we need to, in our young men, our boys, our daughters, people everywhere. Resilience is on the decline and we need to do something about it to see it incline again so that people are stronger and more able to deal with their pressures and their stresses. And that's what today's episode is all about. And I wanna to present to you three essential questions that you need to answer for yourself. Nobody else can answer them for you. You need to answer them in the way that is true to you on your road to resilience. You've got what it takes in seed form to become a resilient man, to deal with your pressures and your challenges and to even get through your darkest of days. But in order to get there, you're gonna to need to do what people do when they go to the gym. You've got to build up those muscles on the inside so that you're ready for your giants, ready to face your greatest challenges. You might even be in a season right now where you're facing the toughest era that you've ever been in. Well, you need resilience more than ever, and I hope that these questions, as you hear them, and as you begin to meditate on them and grapple with them, they are gonna start charting a course for you that takes you down a road towards the destination called resilience. That's what we're all about. So let's get into those three questions now. The first question that you need to answer is, who are you? <laughs> who are you? Now, what do I mean when I say, who are you? In Australia, and in many countries, when you ask a man, who he is, he tends to tell you his vocation and his career. He doesn't tend to talk about his name and other internal traits and values, but he talks about his vocation and his career. And really, the question that he's answering is, what do you do for a living? But it speaks to the fact and it reflects the truth that not a lot of men actually know who they are, as opposed to what they do. Now, I get it, answering the what do you do question also matters, but on the road to resilience, we've got to deal with this question of who are you? You see, you need to choose your traits or traits will choose you. I'm gonna say that again. You need to choose your traits, choose your values, choose the things that you believe in and stand for, because if you don't, they will choose you. And really, do you wanna be a man that is given to the wind of circumstance, or do you wanna be the kind of man that faces the relentless honesty of a mirror? What do I mean by that? What I mean is, when you choose your traits, and you decide the kind of man that you're going to be, when you answer that question, who are you? It shapes and it creates a type of man that you can put in front of yourself. And the picture of that man, let's call him future you. The picture of that man becomes like a mirror staring back at you so that you can look at that picture and assess your current status and say, am I there yet? Do I need to grow? Do I need to keep changing? How do I need to invest in myself to become the man that I want to be? On the road to resilience, you must grapple with the question, who are you? Now, if I put myself in your shoes, I can say that I am a man who has conservative old school values. I believe in the power of family. I believe in the power of loyalty. I believe in the power of perseverance. I believe in the importance of personal faith. I believe in spirituality. 
I believe in owing a debt of gratitude and love to those who show kindness to you. I could take you through a long list of things that are my value set and my missional objectives in life about who I am and how I want to live my life. These are traits that I have chosen. I've surveyed the available traits. I've grappled with what I believe is right and good and healthy good for me, good for others, and I've learned how to filter and sift those things that are not good, not healthy, and to dismiss them from my being and allowing to become part of who I am. But rather, I have chosen the traits that represent and reflect who I want to be, the kind of man that I want to be in my lifetime. You need to answer this question, who are you? Question number two, you need to ask yourself, whose are you? Question number one was, who are you? Question number two, whose are you? In other words, you need to have an idea of who you belong to. This notion of a self-made man or a man who is like an island is a fallacy. It's a deceitful lie that runs us aground on the rocks of life when we thought that we'd be sailing the high seas. You see, the truth is there's no such thing as a self-made man. There's no such thing as a man in isolation who reaches his full potential. We must belong to some bodies and we must belong to some things. But here's the power and here's the autonomy. You get to choose whose you are. And it's important that you do, because if you don't, then all of the possibilities out there will just choose you and snatch you off into a pathway that might not actually be leading to who you need to be and your pathway to resilience. So not only do you need to choose who you are, you need to choose whose you are. Now again, if I put myself into that context, I have been through this process. I know who I am and I know whose I am. And I could list them to you very simply. I know because I have a personal faith, I know I belong to God, my creator. I belong to him. I belong to his love and his security and his strength and his purpose and his identity and his shaping and his provision in my life. That's whose I am. But I am also my family. I belong to them. Who am I? Whose am I? I am my family's. I belong to them. There's a commitment. There's a bridge. They have me. I belong to my wife and children and I belong to my real friends. Now you'll notice I put that word real at the front. I don't have any problem whatsoever having Facebook friends and Instagram friends and all this kind of thing that we have in today's world. But I also know who are my real friends, people with aligned values, people who have a like direction in their life, common purpose. I've answered the question, whose am I? And I would add a fourth group or a fourth answer to that question for me, and that is the recipients. In other words, the people that I am called to in this life. So whose am I? I am God's, I am my family's, I am my real friends, and I am the people who I am meant to give the strength of my giftings to on my journey through this life. There are people who are created and designed to intersect with me and interact with me so that they get to share the benefit of my strength. And I have accepted that that's part of who I am. Number three, super important question. Why are you here? Now, depending where you're at in your life, you can put a certain tone on that that might be helpful or unhelpful. And as we've talked about in previous episodes, very sadly, heartbreakingly, in fact, some men get to the point on their journey where they ask that question with a very negative, very dark, very fatalistic tone. And their question is, why am I even here? But the tone that I'm presenting to you today is a challenging, provocative, positive question that's asking you to ask yourself, why are you here? I don't mean watching this YouTube episode today. I mean, why are you here on the planet? Why did you get here? Why did you survive to this point in time? What is the reason? Here's my point. You need a North Star. You need a compass point, a voice a reason that's calling you forward every day saying you need to keep going. 
You need to get out of bed. You need to push through your challenges. You need to climb that wall, defeat that giant, ascend that mountain, because actually, in the heart and in the DNA of every single man born on the planet is a purpose for their life. It's up to us to discover why we were put here. And I want you not to be overcome, but inspired by that question. Why am I here? It is part of the answer to defeating a lot of the dark demons that are trying to bring you down. Why am I here? Purpose is a mountain and a mountain gives you a reason to keep climbing. I'm going to say that again because I want you to dwell on that for a moment. Pause the video if you need to, write it down if you need to, repeat it to yourself if you need to. Purpose is a mountain and a mountain gives you a reason to keep climbing. I'm reminded of some of the uh, very early mountaineers who decided that they would go to places like the Himalayas and of course with the tremendous help uh, of the locals they tried to take on these incredible conquests and uh, climbers like Edmund Hillary and others who were asked in latter years why did you decide to take on these incredible climbs and these feats of adventure and one of them was quoted to say we climbed Everest because it was there. In other words, there was a mountain in front of me and something on the inside of me was calling me forward and saying, you can overcome this mountain. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that is in the DNA, it's in the genetics, right down to the cellular level of every man on the planet, that you are called for a reason, for a purpose, to climb your mountain, to defeat your giants, to overcome your challenges, and you need that North Star purpose. Three great questions questions to ask yourself on the road to resilience. Number one, who are you? Number two, whose are you? Number three, why are you here? Hey guys, I really want to encourage you about your own personal road to resilience and I want to tell you a story that comes from my uh, not so recent past because it really typifies the kind of attitude and the experience and the spirit of what I'm trying to get at here for you when it comes to the, the journey to becoming a resilient man. You see, when you're resilient, you will become the very best version of yourself. You'll overcome pressure and stress your capacity will grow, you'll improve in your relationships, you'll become far more productive and fruitful in your vocation. Everything gets on the up and up as you increase your resilience. And I'm reminded of a story uh, in my own journey of many, many years ago when I was a young boy here in Australia in the 1980s, yes, I'm that old, growing up in the 80s, it was not easy to get access to live sport on TV. We weren't living in the era of cable TV and streaming services. It was free to air commercial TV. And one of the highlights for sports lovers growing up in the 80s, in Australia at least, was a TV program called Wide World of Sports. And it was a Saturday program that ran for five hours from 1 p.m. till 6 p.m. and they would highlight all these great sports from around the world and they would do various little profiles and documentaries and one particular story that would come up at least once every year is they would highlight this event called the Hawaii Ironman Triathlon. And uh, those of you who know anything about the sport of triathlon know that it's swimming, cycling and running. And uh, the Ironman uh, distance is a, a grueling full day event. And back in the 80s, the Hawaii Ironman, which has gone on to be the world championships, was in the very formative years of its existence. That I can remember, I don't think I've seen the guy walk a step in this race. So there's one thing you can count on when you're out there, is that Dave Scott is not going to die, which means that as a, someone who's going to compete against him, I have to know that I have to go faster, that I'm going to push a little bit harder, and that when it gets tough for me, I'm going to go beyond that one or two or three or ten steps until I get to a point where hopefully the guy's behind me and he's not gaining time on me. It was this incredible story that would get told on this program about, about these men and women that would take on this extraordinary endurance event all in one day, uh, all for the sake of the glory of crossing the line. There was virtually no prize money and 
I remember hearing stories about the very early runnings of that event, how competitors would run in uh, uh, old tennis shoes and, and cut off jeans turned into shorts. So infantile was the sport at that time. Even some of them carried some coins in their pocket so that they could stop at the local service station to buy some drinks halfway through their run. Very, very early days. But I remember watching those images and so powerful were the storylines about these people overcoming this incredible challenge. And somehow as a young boy, the seed of that story, the seed of that conquest and that sense of adventure and that huge question mark, could I do this? It got into my heart. And many, many years later as a grown man, somehow this seed began to sprout green shoots. And uh, I'll never forget in mid 2008, going to a colleague of mine because I'd been dwelling on it and reflecting on these stories. And I went to this colleague friend and said, I'm going to sign up for an Ironman triathlon. Do you want to do it with me? And uh, this friend said to me, their first response was no way in the world. And then after a few weeks of thinking about it, they came back and said to me, when are you thinking? And uh, this now was probably October 2008. I said, there's an event in December 2009. That's the one I'm doing. And he tried to talk me into waiting another year. I said, nope, my mind's made up. I'm registering. Do you want to join me? And uh, he was probably as crazy as I was because he said, yep, I'm in. Let's do it. And so we paid our fee. We signed up for this Ironman triathlon, having never done a small triathlon, mind you. And for those who don't know, triathlon is a 3.8 kilometer ocean swim, 180 kilometer bike ride, finishing with a 42K run, which is a marathon. It's a pretty decent endurance event. So we signed up, paid our money and began to train. We didn't even own bikes. We trained on borrowed bikes and uh, we did our best to get ready. Uh, growing these muscles of resilience and perseverance and all the rest of it. And uh, I remember the longest training ride that I actually managed to do before the race was 104 kilometers. And I remember being at the end of that training ride one day thinking, I feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna die. How am I gonna complete this race? But something got in my heart. And I remember hearing about some friends who apparently had said they didn't think I could finish the race, which at the time shocked me because I thought I was known for being a fairly strong and resilient person. But here I was hearing about these people who weren't sure if I had what it took to overcome this challenge. And I remember that being like petrol on a fire to me and thinking to myself, I'll show them and I'll show everyone. And uh, I said to a few people, I said, I will crawl across that finish line on my hands and knees if I have to. Anyway, let me bring the story to a close. We did actually get to that race in December. 2009 it was in Western Australia and as luck would have it we had an incredibly hot day the temperature on the day was 41 degrees Celsius I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit we'll have to do the calculation put it on the screen somewhere 41 degrees Celsius horrendously difficult day and uh, it was the toughest day of my life but I do remember constantly facing the question through the day, I need to know what is in me when I get to the end of myself. You see, my theory had been that I believed at the end of myself was a tough guy who didn't want to quit. A, a guy who was resilient and strong who said, no, I've got to finish what I started. And on that particular day, I got to stretch myself in a way like I had never stretched myself mentally and emotionally or physically in my life. And uh, pleased to say I did finish that race. It took me 14 hours and 49 minutes to finish. The brutality of Ironman triathlon is that there is a 17 hour cutoff and if you're even five seconds late for the cutoff, you do not get registered as an official finisher in the race. It was the toughest day of my life at that point in time, but I proved something to myself on that day and that was that resilience can be built. Resilience can be developed. Resilience can be grown and I discovered that there was this incredible opportunity to unlock the power of simulation in my thoughts and in my emotions through the vehicle of physical training. I discovered that when I was running or when I was out on the road doing a lonely bike ride for training or I was in a swimming pool with my face down staring at a black line for two hours going up and down the pool, I discovered that as I committed to that vehicle of physical training, 
my thoughts and my emotions were growing muscles that were becoming so strong and I was able to take those same muscles from triathlon training into my workplace, into my family life, into my stress, into my pressure, into the issues that I was dealing with in other arenas. And it amazed me that in my soul, something was growing through triathlon that had a usage in every arena of my life. And really, when it comes down to it, what I discovered in those years doing those endurance events, I realized that something was available to me that I'm here to tell you today is available to you. I discovered the secret to the psychology of breakthrough. And learning this skill, mastering this competency is what has allowed me to develop incredible resilience in my lifetime. And now I've got the pleasure of sharing those secrets with other men so that they too can reach that destination on their own personal road to resilience. Guys, so I really want to encourage you that uh, whatever place you're in in your life, whatever season, whatever age and stage, I want you to know that you've actually got what it takes on the inside to build and develop resilience. You can become a man who's got what it takes for perseverance, overcoming challenges, and I really, really want to urge you, you have got what it takes to get it done. Now, after today's episode, you'll be able to grapple with those three questions that we talked about earlier, and they will help you. For those of you who really want to take a deep dive and go to the next level on your road to resilience, I want you to click on this video up here, and I'm going to show you the secrets to the psychology of breakthrough and how you can get to that destination of becoming a resilient man. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.